back-to-back -back all SEC first seeds for Akia Jackson. What does it say about her that she was able to do that? Well, I tell you, there are a lot of talented players in our league this year. A lot of players that had great stats consistently um, throughout the, the season and just proud of her. You know, uh, I think she deserves that and uh, I'm glad we can recognize her and how well she's performed um, since she's been on this campus. Seemed like the offensive movement just was, was better against South Carolina and Joel talked about after the game how you know, Jasmine did a good job opening things up for her to get downhill. Just what did you think of the offensive, like the ball movement you guys were able to get in Jasmine's goal in that? Yeah, we, we had to work really hard um, to get some ball movement. I thought South Carolina got after us pretty good, um, but we hung in there. Uh, you know, that's something we've been working on is, is continuing to have ball movement. Uh, I, I thought, um, I, I agree, I thought Jasmine had a pretty good handle of where we needed to go with it. Um, you know, uh, and, and we were able to get it inside and out. I, I thought we had um, pretty good spacing throughout the game as well. The defense seems to have taken a major step, holding South Carolina to their smallest margin of victory at home this year. Just what are you most proud of in the back half of the season for the defense? We've gotten better, there, there's no doubt. Uh, we've improved with our connectivity between one another. I think we've improved with our toughness. I think we, um, we've been handling game plans. We've guarded personnel pretty well. So, you know, just really proud that it became a focus for our team. This is the first year that you guys have finished third since you've gotten here. First year without a double bye. How does just that change the weekend for you, starting a day earlier and potentially having just like an extra game in that run that you might have? Well, our, our first year we were in, uh, we had to play on Thursday, oh, okay, our okay. first year, but that was before probably before you. Um, so I'm sorry. Ask me again. Just, just how does the uh, you know starting a day earlier change things this weekend and maybe having an extra game in that potential run? Yeah, uh, it changes your your prep uh, for sure. Going, um, uh, got to get down there a day earlier. Um, you you might have had an extra day off this week, but now you don't. Um, we've we've got to practice now, so we're off Monday. Practice Tuesday. Um, Wednesday will be a long day down there your day before a game because you have media obligations you have open gym we're going to be watching a game um, we'll have our own practice so it's a lot that happens on that on that on Wednesday for us now um, and then you know you, you can't you can't skip you can't skip steps you cannot play on Friday unless you win on Thursday and so the focus you know really really has to be on game one if you're able to get to that quarterfinal game, is there any benefit of having a game under you? You know, I, um, I think as a coach, you're always thinking, oh, they've played, they'll have the advantage. And if you if you didn't play, or if you if you didn't play, and then if you did, you're thinking, oh, they'll be rested. You know, you're always always looking at the at the opportunities that your opponent has. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there's at the end of the day if there's an overall advantage. Um, you just have to come out and be ready to play. Obviously, the, the turnaround time is you got to get your legs back under you uh, again. Um, but you just have to take it for what it is, and it's a game, and it's an opportunity. Do you think right now just having played such a tough stretch, it might be nice to just have, like, that first game and, you know, maybe a little less pressure in that first game just to get going and get in a rhythm? Well, I think um, for our team, um, you know, we have big goals. And the way we're going to approach it is uh, we're going to only talk about Georgia and Kentucky. I mean, we're going we're gonna to talk about what we need to do against those two teams. And I, we can't really look, look past that. And, you know, for me, I don't look at it as, a, you know, a, a lesser opponent. It's still a more competitive game. There's no, no doubt about it. I mean, both of those teams have quality wins in our league. How much confidence does it give you having wins earlier in the season against both Georgia and Kentucky? Well, I think, you know, um, at this point, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. I think a record's 0-0. Zero, zero. So you go back and you learn from those. Um, you learn if you if you did things well, you want to keep doing those things. But you're also trying to stay one step ahead. Your opponent's going to make a game change. So what is that going to look like? Um, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to live scout them on Wednesday, which I think will be good for our team because, I mean, it has been a long time since we've played specifically Kentucky, but Georgia as well. So we got to get back familiar with those opponents. Lady Vols have proven they can hang with the best.
best teams in the country, both times playing South Carolina, and then also LSU. Just how beneficial have those two opponents been to prepare you guys for this tournament? Yeah, I think we've played. I think we've played well as of late. Um, obviously, three of those losses late came to two, you know, top ten opponents that we competed with. Um, I think our team has a lot of confidence right now. I, I do. I, I think we're we're going over to Greenville. Uh, you know, feeling good about what, what we need to do and how we can play. You said the mindset is just solely focused on Georgia and Kentucky. How do you get your players to not overlook the entire tournament and just solely focus on those two teams? Yeah, I think it's human nature to, to look at, at what's ahead and um, at the whole. But I think our team is, will be pretty locked in. I, I think, uh, you know, having to go back through a very um, – We'll have to go back through a scouting report in a lot of detail, so I think that will help them. Um, we'll have to do quite a bit of film session. I do think the live scout will help our team being there and seeing them in person and and um, watching some of our game clips with, with whoever wins that uh, will, will be important as well. Do you think this team is playing their best basketball right now? I think we played our best basketball in the last couple of weeks. I do. Um, we just have to keep that trend going. Is there anything that sticks out about, you know, the best basketball that this team has been playing? I think it's um, – I think we've improved in a lot of areas. I think you mentioned earlier ball movement has been important. Um, our defense has been important, um, putting those things together. We haven't been perfect, and I still think we have growth ahead of us. I still think we haven't maxed out. So we want to we wanna keep working to, to get that. How hard is it to hit that best basketball at the perfect time in navigating that? Well, I think one of the things that um, our teams have, have done consistently throughout our career is just the getting better. I, I think our teams have gotten better. And if you continue to get better, get better, get better, you, you're going to be playing your best basketball league. Um, I think that is as much a mindset as anything, an attitude, a willingness of your players to continue to work hard and get better through a long, long season. And, and they have. They've come back every day ready and willing to practice and uh, allow us to push them. I know Kamari took a hit to the nose Sunday. Is she doing all right? Is she ready to, you know, rock and roll? Yeah, uh, Tamari is fine. Um, I actually, I, I think that I got the word everybody should be good to go, so hopefully that's the case. Thank you. All right.